We're getting to uh, a part that's really exciting and fun because we get to recognize individuals that have had some of the biggest impact, if not the biggest impact, in our patient safety world, if not for a long time, but at least in the last year. And two of the awards that we're going to start off with are named after two people that are near and dear friends of ours, uh, Steve Moreau, Humanitarian Award. Steve, some of you know, was a member of our board, CEO, COO, unbelievable human being, an action-driven uh, person, and was taken away from us too early because of pancreatic cancer. And the Bo Biden Humanitarian Award was the Attorney General in, I guess, Delaware, and uh, obviously son of Joe Biden, and he had done amazing work protecting children against abuse, and he too was taken away with uh, brain cancer and unfortunately way too early. But both of them were exemplary humanitarians who did so much for so many and that's why we honor those uh, amazingly incredible humanitarian award winners with those two names. So the first one I'm gonna do is the Steve Moreau Humanitarian Award. And this award goes to an individual that came to our county and shook things up and really galvanized his entire team behind his mission of 100% patient safety for every patient that comes through their hospital. And I've seen the before and after, and all I can tell you, I, I'm so happy that this individual came here, did what he did, to, uh, to not only change things here, but to show everybody else in academia what is possible. I'd like to uh, ask uh, Dr. Bill Wilson to get on stage to be recognized for the Steve Burrow Humanitarian Award. Please, come on up. What a surprise, but uh, such, a, such a gratitude on my behalf to receive such a prestigious award. Uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. We thank you. So this is a, a very big surprise. I um, am humbled. It was five years ago that I was recruited from UC San Diego where I had spent about a little more than two decades uh, as a professor and vice chair of the Department of Anesthesiology doing adult and pediatric uh, cardiac anesthesia and, and then really spending my focus on critical care. And they recruited me up to run all the intensive care units at UCI. We put in 30 evidence-based protocols and um, got the doctors and nurses and pharmacists, respiratory therapists, OT, PT, working together to improve uh, the care of those patients. And then it was uh, very nice that they asked me to step in to be the chief medical officer about two years ago now. And um, we are, uh, my wife and I, Burden and Dad, who's here, um, thank you, Burden and Dad, <coughs> who, um, of course, without her help, I would have never been able to even be considered for something like this, but we attended for the first time the meeting in Dana Point and came back to the hospital and I asked the team, all the directors and physicians, are you ready to commit to zero preventable deaths by 2020? And people looked uh, and they said, yes, we are. And it galvanized, we were already doing some things, but we really ac accelerated our velocity towards the, uh, to the achievement. We're not quite there yet, but we've, we've done a lot, and um, it's just been, uh, it, it's been, a, that, that inspiration that came from that meeting was great. And I would just also, uh, just if I have a moment, that <clears throat> when we did the mid-year planning session recently, at the beginning, I think it, it was you and Peter Pronovos that were talking a little bit at the beginning about, um, how do we feel about the level of safety in our community and our hospitals and so forth? And then at the closing remarks, we, we came back to that subject matter. 
And it was 100% that all of us felt so much better about if we were going to have to go into one of the hospitals, including our own, that we all felt so much better because of the ideas that were exchanged, the commitments that were made, and the, the love in the room for doing the right thing, for moving it to, to the next level. So uh, it, it was, and you know, again, when you come back from a meeting like that and bring it back to the hospital, we get charged up, elevates everyone else, and uh, it, it just, you know, perpetuates. So, th so thank you for even thinking of me for such uh, just, you know, really kind, kind offerings. So thank you very much. Well, the Bo Biden uh, Humanitarian Award, we've reserved it for government officials who've done great things in moving the dial. But this young lady who, thank God, came from... Uh, Nashville to join us here in California. She did what the government work should have been. She helped uh, heard many CEOs of hospitals of HQI and the California Hospital Association to make a commitment to not only publicly state every medical error they have on a quarterly basis, but to also have them implement all of the apps that we know will save people's lives. And uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for her. And she's gone through some bumps along the way as leadership change, had to get the new leadership on board. And yet she persevered, has done it. You heard from her today. Julie Marath, would you please come up here and accept the award for the <laughs> Bo Biden Humanitarian Award? Well, this was a real surprise. Um, I did find out a few days ago to make sure that I was going to be here and uh, wouldn't miss it. Haven't for uh, five, six years now. Um, yeah, I was minding my own business at Vanderbilt and David Perot uh, is the chairman of the HQI board. And David found me and told me I needed to be in California. And one of the first people I met here was Joe and everything kind of went from there. It's one of the best parts of being in California, Joe. Thank you. And uh, never look back. It's um, a wonderful environment and with this kind of intellect, innovation, uh, and will. There's nothing we can't do here. Uh, and our diversity, I think, also speaks to what's scalable across the world. And it's humbling and inspiring to be amongst all of you. It's a wonderful community that really uh, lifts up everything we do. So thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Well, um, our next guest and winner of the Humanitarian Award comes from a country that our current president really likes. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish this gentleman's father was alive because his father started something nice, but he did something great. With the commitment he made to helping save lives everywhere, even in the countries our current president doesn't like, uh, he has saved tens of thousands of lives, and we are so grateful for his passion, compassion, and uh, we're honored to give Torre Laradol the Humanitarian Award this year. Thank you very much, uh, Joe, for those uh, much too kind words. Um, we are actually not saving lives. Our aim is to help the millions of bystanders first responders and healthcare personnel who treat patients in needs of resuscitation or emergency care to be a little better trained and a little better equipped. And in doing so, we are very, very privileged to work very closely with many partners, among them the American Heart Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the World Federation of Societies of Anesthesiologists, uh, USAID, Save the Children, UNICEF, Chapaigo, and others. So they have a big uh, part in this award. And so has the patient safety movement to inspire us 
to continue to try to do what we do. Thank you very much.